Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel. My name is Yudi, and I go by Yudi on the Glow. Here are my other social media platforms, so make sure you guys subscribe, hit that bell, go ahead and like this video. Today, we're gonna be talking about some spring trends that I've come across that you can wear this spring season and into the summer. If you're interested, please stay tuned. And just before we get started, I have a couple announcements. The first one is to the supporter who so kindly and respectfully was looking out for me in the comments. Do know I responded, but I went ahead and took the video down so I get a little bit of clarity, but I appreciate you, okay? The other thing, so today is April 8th and it's the day of the eclipse. Um, I'm kind of like looking outside. It's it's, it's looking kind of weird but you let me know are you the type to go out and watch the eclipse or are you the type to stay in a house i kind of like the idea of staying inside but also i don't have sunglasses so i'm not going outside <laughs> all right let's get into this video first category we're going to start off with is colors now i've been hearing so much about icy blue and baby blue what are your thoughts on this i feel like for me personally, I, I don't necessarily gravitate towards that color. Now, if we're talking about like a periwinkle, I love a good periwinkle. And what I mean by periwinkle is kind of like the in-between of like a soft blue and almost like a lilac lavender. If you guys have seen Playful Purple from Aritzia, that, that's the color I'm talking about. But the icy blues, are you guys in for it? I don't own too much of this shade. The closest thing I have to it are like button down blouses. Outside of denim, I don't really lean towards blue. I'm not rushing to the shelves to get baby blue. But let me know, are you gonna be wearing or grabbing more blue? Let me know. Now, the next thing I have are reds continue. That bright red and that cherry and burgundy red were really having their moment fall, winter, throughout, and are kind of continuing on now. I kind of feel like these will probably fade out a little bit towards the summer. Let me know your thoughts, but I do enjoy red. I gotta say towards red, you know, I had to give y'all the red lippies today, all of that. Another color that's being continued is buttered yellow, and I enjoy a good buttered yellow. It's something about it that's so light, uplifting, and fun. This is something that I wouldn't mind getting more of in my closet because I enjoy wearing yellow when I can. I feel like it's a mood boost, like dopamine dressing. Yeah, I like the butter yellow and I feel like it also kind of serves as a neutral as well. So if you don't have butter yellow, are you going to get you some? I don't think it hurts to have butter yellow in your closet. I really don't. And lastly, the Pantone color of the year, I hope I'm saying that right, was peach fuzz. Now, I haven't seen much of it. I haven't seen much of it in the stores. I haven't seen much people wearing it. Have you guys gotten to peach fuzz? Like that light orange, almost pastel orange? I don't feel like I'm missing out, like I need to grab more. I don't see it catching my eye as much as the reds and the buttered yellows. Let me know your thoughts on the colors. Okay, next we are moving into prints and textures. Now the first texture I wanna talk about is fringe. And I love what a fringe moment can do to a look. Not only does it add texture, it adds movement. It's something whimsical about it. I enjoy it. And I've also come to the realization that I'm a Bottega girl at heart. So I did see a couple dresses on the runway recently. I think it was this last January or so. And the dresses I did see, they remind me a lot of the AJ dresses. One thing I would love, I don't even know if the dress would look right on me, but I would love, I can't stress it enough, if AJ brought back the orange fringe dress that they have. I would love that. And since we're just talking about Bottega, I do want to talk about pleats. And Bottega had a pleated dress. I believe this is from Bottega Fall 24. Honorary mention, I love the movement, I love the pleats, and I love the color. Next up in prints, we're talking about animal prints. And this is a continued trend from fall winter. What are our thoughts? In this realm, I've been seeing a lot of leopard print kind of going and phasing off of that mob wives aesthetic, which was kind of weird. It was what it was. People just threw on fur coats and animal prints and called it a day. But with this, I've seen a lot of leopard print followed by some zebra prints and a few more. Adding to this, I have pinstripes continued. Pinstripes are a very clean and classic pattern to have in your closet. A lot of the pieces that you can get pinstripe, you can also just get solid. And I feel like if you're getting like a solid blazer that's just all black, that is something that you can wear year round to many, many occasions but if you're getting that same blazer that's pinstripe it adds a little extra texture it adds a little extra pattern but would you say it's as versatile as a plain blazer you know what i'm saying so sometimes i feel like with pinstripes it's easy to kind of get lumped into like that business casual workwear a little bit more serious a little bit more put together let me know your thoughts on this. I feel like pinstripes, it's kind of hard to dress it down to be super casual. You can make it look comfortable and thrown on and chic. There's still gonna be that element of like workwear, at least for me. Okay, next up we have dramatic florals, again, continued. But, but okay, with florals, I feel like those are on par with the season. When you think of spring, you think of flowers, you think of bloom. So florals, when spring comes around, are never out of the ordinary. However, I've been seeing a lot of emphasis on 3D, multi-dimensional rosettes, large-scale florals, embroidery, 
embroidery and so on so basically adding a little extra to your typical floral is what i'm seeing next up i want to talk about sheer and open knit pieces now in this category we are showing skin okay we are showing skin and we are late and i would definitely say this trend is continuing from fall winter and in this i've been seeing a lot of transparency or open weaves especially when it comes to dresses and skirts and last but not least in this category we are talking about leather especially in metallics they are still going strong the other thing that i will always harp on and remind you guys are that metallics are not limited to just your gold silver and bronze gunmetal whatever the case it also includes those colors i feel like especially with the season warming up spring being here and summer approach this will be the time to like try out some colorful metallics whether it be like a magenta or a copper rusted orange or a lime or a lime green um a bright blue those are just another piece of texture that's sometimes unexpected but could really add to your looks this spring this summer next up we're moving on to pieces and silhouettes that's what i'm going to call this category the first thing i want to talk about is the no pants look Again, this trend has continued from fall, winter. Have any of our thoughts changed on the no pants look? I mean, cause one could say sun's out, butts out, you know? What, what are we thinking? What are we thinking on the short short, no pants, Daisy Dukes, coochie cutters? What are we thinking about the short shorts? Let me know. Another piece and trend that I feel like is fitting for the season is the little white dress. And I personally, for me, but I mean, I consider this to be a staple piece after having a little black dress in your closet, okay? Now with this, it doesn't necessarily have to be little. You know, you can have a T length, maxi, mini, whatever the case you want it to be. It doesn't have to be a little mini dress. And secondly, it doesn't have to be stark white. I've been loving seeing a lot of creams, a lot of ivories, and a lot of off-white. And many times I tend to lean more towards those when I want a more elevated and put together look. You know what I mean? So little white dresses, yeah. I feel like that's something that should already be in our closet and that you can get great use out of during the year. And I also feel like this is a piece that you kind of just want to grab while you're out looking around. Like, I feel like if you have an event and you want a little right dress and you go looking for it, that's when nonsense will start happening because you won't be able to find what you want. So I would say if you're out shopping and looking to add pieces to your closet, again, we're not just adding we're just for the sake to just add. But while you're out, if you do see a cute little white dress, you know, give it a try. See if it's something that can add to your looks in the current and in the future. Next up, as far as silhouettes go, I've been seeing the continuation of the drop waist. I've been seeing these in one pieces like dresses and I've also been seeing them in separates as well with your pants, skirts, all of that. When it comes to dresses, I've been seeing more A-line silhouettes with pleats and ruffles added at that drop waist and below just to add more volume and give you that A-line shape. So I'm not too mad at that style and I've been enjoying it. And since we're on the topic of drop waist, another trend that I've been seeing that's very 2000s, very Y2K are the low waist denim jeans. Let me know if you're wearing low waist. Me, I'm not going to be wearing a low waist because one thing about it because one thing about it i'm gonna tuck this stomach into my high waist pants but i feel like if you're up for it go for it when it comes to more fitted bottoms i feel like people with longer torsos look the best in low waist jeans that are you know more fitted but on the opposite end of more loose fitted baggy pants cargo pants i've seen that work on many different body types so is this what you want to try out i would say the easier way to go about this is probably to go for a fitted or crop top and wear your cargo or loose jeans you know low and have that even itself out or you can just go with a baggy top this is something to play around with but i, I probably won't be playing with it just to be honest <laughs> when it comes to skirts i've been seeing a lot of maxi skirts and i've been seeing a lot of fuller skirts but on the opposite end i've been seeing some pencil and tube skirts as well so i'm not necessarily like a skirts and dress kind of girl but I, but I do have to remind myself and challenge myself to wear them more often skirts are your thing let me know are you guys going for the more volume and maxi skirts or are you going to go for a more fitted look let me know in the comments now this next trend i haven't seen as much on the runway but i've been seeing it a lot on my timelines from the fashion girlies and guys and it's the layering of pleated skirt now i've seen this over pants and i've also seen it under dresses and when it's under dresses it kind of gives that peplum look a little bit i feel like it's more of a sub trend or it's more niche like i don't see everyone doing it but this is something i want to try out it's a little bit more edgy it's a little bit more streetwear i like it i i want to try this out myself if this is something you want to try out let me know when you do it and i do want to spot like this look that i found from lacoste fall winter 24 runway Now, another trend that we're seeing are high-waist trousers. For me, these are a staple. These will always be in fashion. So 
you know, depending on what you're up to. But for me, I'm gonna say this is a staple piece. And in this, I've been seeing a lot of tailored pants and a lot of paper bag pants. If you don't own any pants like this and you wanna try elevating your looks, elevating your day-to-day -day outfits, or just adding a little bit something different, a little bit excited to your regular routine. If you're someone who usually wears sweats, I feel like this is a nice replacement or a nice little swap a room just to change things up and still make you feel put together. Like for instance, I noticed like, I can't go a long period of time wearing loose fitted or slouchy clothes. It starts to take a toll on my mood. So if you are anything similar to that, I would say switch out your sweats for a tailored trouser that's also still comfortable that you can still wear with your same outfit, even if you're wearing sneakers. That's the look I did recently. And even if wearing baggy or slouchy clothes don't affect your mood and you just want to switch it up, I would say give it a try and let me know when you do it. And another niche trend that I've been seeing are barrel jeans. Now, with barrel jeans, it's all about fit. I feel like these are not the kind of pants that you can necessarily like buy online and expect them to fit perfectly. I feel like these are the kind of pants that are going to make you go in the store, try them on, and make sure they're fitted right on your body because I feel like these are very hit or miss. Or if you are ordering online, you might have to order several sizes just to see what works for you. I feel like this is for a very niche subset. Not many people are into bare jeans or can pull them off, but you know, do you, do you boo? However, do I think these will stand the test of time? Do I think people will still be wearing barrel jeans a year from now by the end of the year? I personally don't think so, but if it's something you want to try out, again, let me know when you do it. And last but certainly not least in this category are Capri pants. You might also know them as crop pants or um, pedal pushers or knee knockers, whichever one is the case. Now, when it comes to capris, I feel like there's two categories of capris. You have the capris that stop, you know, right at the knee or right below the knee. Then you also have capris that can kind of stop mid-calf or a little bit above the ankle. I feel like what's trending now are the ones that stop right at your knee or right over your knee. However, I thought I'd be seeing more of it. I haven't been seeing so many people in capris. Where, where y'all at? Like, where y'all at? I haven't been seeing many of them in the stores either. I did see a couple the other day. So there's a look I want to put together. And I think I think it will hit because, you know, Capri's are very hit or miss. Either you love them or you hate them or you just don't care for them. But I feel like the majority just doesn't care for them. But if you know what you're doing, you can do something. Because imagine this. Imagine this. Hear me out. Hear me out. This will lean more into the clean girl aesthetic. And there's a look I have in mind that I want to do. But imagine you have on your Capri's. You have on your pumps or sling bags, whether it be a kin heel or a full heel. And you got your oversized blazer on top. You know, the refrigerator blazer, you got that kind of like evening it out. And then you have like some black sunglasses on, maybe some, you know, some cute small ones or cat eyes or like the little oval ones. You know, the ones that were popular from Celine. Yeah, look. Now, I did hear someone say I believe the Capri trend was kind of like a response to all the baggy pieces we were wearing, especially when it came to cargoes. What do y'all think about that? Is that a reach or not? I see it, but I also think that Capris are such a spring summer thing. I feel like they're things that if you have them, you pull them out as soon as the weather starts warming up. But when it comes to Capris, off the top of my head, when I'm thinking about fashion, if I want to take it back, I'm thinking of Dorothy Dandridge, thinking of Audrey Hepburn, Marilyn Monroe, and a lot of the styles of that time. I'm also thinking of some of my favorite movies, which are Dirty Dancing and Grease. Those used to come out back in the day every year around Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I'm thinking of the fashions from those movies. And I'm also thinking of Jack Moose Spring 2023. He had a, like three looks come down the runway with capris, some sort of top, you know, with a little bolero, some type of short crop jacket, and these over the top hats and over the top sunflower earrings. That is a look I want to recreate on vacation. Maybe I'm visiting somewhere in Europe. That's what I'm gonna recreate because I want to be a matador. Okay, I'm not gonna kill nobody or no bulls, but you know, it gives like the matted world effect. That's what I want to recreate. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it one day, like somewhere in Greece or Italy. I'm gonna do it one day. Just watch. Uh, next up, we're gonna move into bags. One of the things that are really trending in bags are oversized catch all bags. So, I've been seeing this a lot with larger and bigger clutches. They're either big bags that you can fold over and tuck under your arm or they're just very big and slouchy, kind of like the Bottega pouch back in the day. That is the look that I'm seeing and I'm here for it. I have this one bag that I got from TJ Maxx that I can't wait to use. Now is the time. It gives that feel and then I also have like this white Bottega inspired pouch bag that I've had in my closet for a minute so I might need to dust that off and use it this season. And we've been seeing a lot of totes emerge. Okay, y'all let me know your thoughts. So the row, I've been seeing so many videos on the, the Rose Margot bag and what y'all think about it? For me, I think the bag may be of great quality. It just personally doesn't catch my eye, but also that is not my tax bracket. <laughs> 
so it ain't got nothing to do with me but let me know your thoughts on the margo bag if you guys have been seeing it no one asked but it's not for me next up we have the denim bags i feel like denim bags are great novelty pieces these are great pieces that can be very unique to you because i feel like when people put out denim bags there's only so many that they put out and a lot of times when i see people put together an outfit and they pull one out it's like oh i got this five years ago i got this years ago so i feel like denim bags are a great eye catcher and unique piece to have in your closet when it comes to my contemporary and more affordable brand i've been seeing a lot of hype around the coach tabby kurt geiger tori birch the till Feezy's, mark jacobs has like the tote and i've been seeing jack moose too even more affordable and kind of in that um, fast fashion range i've been seeing a lot of bags from urban outfitters urban revival tj maxx whenever i stop by and akira and if you want unique pieces and you got an Akira in your area, just stop by the store. Akira has single-handedly gotten me back to being in a mall. It has. Because anytime I stop by, there's always something on sale or some type of door buster. I'm just looking around, waiting for something to go on sale. Either I'm going to buy it in the store or buy it online when it goes on sale. When it comes to the pre-love market for more luxury designers, Fendi has some throwback denim baguettes. Valentino with the Rama Stud and some of their other styles have a lot of denim bags. I've seen some from Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Saint Laurent, and also Dior with the Dior saddle. So I, I personally think these are great pieces to have. But let me know, is this a must for your wardrobe? Do you think you need a denim bag in your closet if you don't have it already? And if you already have one in your closet, is it something that you can still style today? Let me know. And last in bags, we have straw and raffia bag. Now, I feel like these are bags of the season, especially with the material, especially with the texture and the overall vibe it gives off. It gives off spring, it gives off summer. So I feel like if you already have a nice go to straw, raffia, or, or canvas bag that kind of gives that look, this is the time to dust them off and work them into your outfits for the spring summer. Or add one to your closet if you don't have one. I'm not telling you to go buy it, but you know, if you need it, you know, you gotta, you know. This is gonna be in the stores. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to footwear. Now, one of the things I've been hearing as far as sneakers go, I've been hearing there's a transition from chunky sneakers to more sleek sneakers. So think about your dad's sneaker, like the New Balances or even Nike, Reeboks, all of them, transitioning to your, like your Adidas Sambas or your Adidas Giselles. What do you guys think about that? I feel like I'm at a point where I've seen several styles cycle in and out. And this kind of like makes me feel like Back in the day, I was not checking for New Balances. I just was. Now that I know my style, I know what I like, my chunky shoes are gonna stay because it kind of makes me think about like like 90s soccer mom, soccer dad, dressing from back then. They may have looked awkward then, but that was their style. They kept wearing it and then the style came back and became popular. I feel like that's how I feel with my chunky sneakers. I love having a few pairs in my closet and they give me a vintage feel. There's some nostalgia there for me that I enjoy. Now, when it comes to like the gazelles and the sambas, have you guys rode that wave? I feel like I've seen them so many places that I'm like, they have to be comfortable because so many people are wearing them. Um, but I've also heard them compared to bowling shoes. Y'all think that? If anything, I've been seeing when it comes to the Sambas, I've been seeing the most popular one being that white, taupe, and black pair. I just, I don't think they're terrible. I don't necessarily gravitate towards them. For me, what's a little bit more exciting is seeing the ones in like the bright colors, like the bright reds, the oranges, the yellows. I've enjoyed that. But let me know, are you a chunky sneaker or a sleek sneaker? Or, you know, we do them both. Let me know. Next up, we have the Mary Jane Flat continued this trend is still going strong and within it i've peeped more slightly squared toes and i've also seen a lot of them in mesh materials and one of the main ones i've seen people talk about a lot are the alaya flats so let me know is this something you want to add to your wardrobe get something similar is it a yes or a no for your wardrobe let me know also in continued trends we have celine bags now for me celine bags are a staple celine bags do not go out of style so if you want a couple celine bags this is the time to get them stock up because they're gonna be in the stores but for me these are pieces that do not go out of style if you know what you're wearing and it fits your wardrobe your style aesthetic for me you cannot go wrong in a nice sling bag and i find them to be more comfortable than like regular pump and especially when you have a pointed toe peeking out the bottom of your jeans or trousers that's a look it's such a look that's my take on that now this next one that i've been hearing i haven't heard too many people talk about it and i haven't seen much of it but people have been talking about boat shoes coming back. And I've been seeing this more so in menswear. And I've seen some with like a chunkier sole. But just overall, regardless of gender, what are we thinking about boat shoes? I feel like when it comes to boat shoes, 
I always think about Sperry's, like that is my ultimate boat shoe. It's kind of like when I think about Birkenstocks. Like, I feel like Birkenstocks and Sperry's are, are brands that have really solidified who they are and have been around for years that I feel comfortable buying with them. And if there's something that's more expensive or out there on the market, I probably wouldn't go for them when someone like Sperry's exists. Are you guys gonna be rocking boat shoes? And I feel like that kind of leans into like that sailor or nautical look that's trying to peek through. Let me know your thought. While we're talking about that, next up we're gonna talk about aesthetics overall. Now, one of the aesthetics that I've been seeing are the has been referred to as 80s excess. With this, I'm thinking of Boshino, I'm thinking of Grace Jones, I'm thinking of Madonna Material Girl and all things that come with that. I'm also thinking about tweeds, sling back, more narrow sunglasses or cat eye sunglasses all of those things so that's what i'm kind of thinking when i'm thinking about 80 sheet and i can't forget like that chanel tweed um what was that movie um what was the movie with um what you call it dang i can't remember the movie it's losing me but i know like the main characters were always in tweed or in a, like a yellow plaid that isn't like a kind of hillary banks kind of look even though that's 90s but you know that kind of vibe but this also kind of like segues into prep school and athletic preppy as its own aesthetic with this i'm seeing a lot of colored necklines and polos tops and dresses i'm also seeing a lot of varsity inspired ringer top that have that contrast trim on it at the neckline or at the wrist I'm seeing a lot of that. And even though this is next season, Lacoste, Fall, Winter 24, oh, they had pieces. I came across this because a creator on my TikTok timeline was talking about their runway. And I realized I've never seen a Lacoste runway. And Heike, I haven't heard people talking about Lacoste in so long. Like, maybe sometime last year I was on their website because I was like looking for tote bags. But aside from that, I don't hear people talking about it. But Lacoste had so many pieces. We know that they're already like, athletic inspired. They had so many runway pieces that leaned into like that tennis athleisure that I'm all the way here for. And then also upon doing a little bit of research, is it um, Renee or Jean Lacoste? He's credited with the polo look. Like I'm gonna have to look into that more and cross check it. But I said, oh. <laughs> I didn't know that, but it makes sense. Some other designer houses that I've seen really pushing this athleisure, this prep school look on the runways are Prada, Miu Miu, MCM, and Louisville. And from here, let's segue into the corporate business casual aesthetic look. And I feel like this is usually like a balancing act of oversized pieces and proportion. And a lot of pieces and elements of this kind of overlap that prep school look at its most basic of levels is really just toss on a white button down shirt, some trousers and a tie, boom, you got the look. And I feel like this gave birth to the office siren aesthetic, which for me kind of feels like cosplay of work attire with more emphasis on sex appeal. I don't know, that could just be me, but a lot of videos that I saw that had um, office siren had that kind of feel attached. And I'm like, I'm okay with workplace baddie. I'm okay with corporate baddie, but office siren, it just feels a little weird to me, but I, it could just be me at least from what I've seen. So it's like, let's BFFR. We're still at work, you know? At most, I feel like the corporate baddie aesthetic could be the big sis to the office siren, at least, at least from my own browsing history. When I've seen people use that term, um, it's more realistic. It's about being fashionable in the workplace, but still maintaining your style and not necessarily like sex appeal to turn on your coworkers or your boss. That, that that's just my opinion and last but not least we are leaning into the western and boho chic aesthetic now i have noticed this everywhere when it comes to styling when it comes to media when it comes to entertainment but i haven't seen it really outlined in the fashion blogs i'm not too sure why not and i feel like it's really gonna go strong this summer and this spring especially considering pharrell and louis vuitton those are western looks with mixed review but still the influence was western especially with the resurgence of black people and black culture and country act two cowboy carter we're gonna see more western looks i'm here for it and i think next i'm gonna record a video of my reaction to cowboy carter too i don't, I don't know yet but i want to because that that would make me feel a lot of things <laughs> and another thing i want to call attention to i recently came across rihanna's vogue china covers oh oh, oh she was taking it she was now with her i feel like with her cover what really brought out that western feel and some of the other trends that we've already mentioned is that heavy embroidery and pearls on her florals and also 
the details and silhouette really highlight that indigenous American and Mexican influence that really contributes to what we now consider Western cowboy and bohemian chic type looks. So I am here for the Western looks. Matter of fact, I need to get me a cowboy hat. That's what I'm missing. So those are all the trends I have to share with you guys for this spring and leading into summer. If more come along, I'll add another video. Go ahead and comment what trends you're excited to try and what trends you've already been wearing or have to dig in that closet and dust off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Got a few tidbits here and there. And if you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe and like this video. And as always, keep telling a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend like telephone. But in the meantime, I'm gonna leave a couple videos for you guys on the screen and I will see you next video. Bye guys. You guys, I'm starting to do swim class today. So I gotta take all of this off and head to the swim class. Bye y'all.